This video is brought to you by NordVPN. Start protecting your internet experience today with 77% off a three-year plan at nordvpn.com slash chmtech. Hey ladies and gentlemen of YouTube, you're watching CHM Tech, and in this video, we're gonna be talking about transparency in computer graphics. So if you've ever done any sort of graphics editing on a computer, then you're probably familiar with the concept of image transparency which is something extremely useful because you can have something like this picture of a frame where only the frame itself is opaque and everything else, as far as the computer is concerned, is completely see-through. So you can take that image, place it on top of another one, and see through the middle, just like you would if you took an actual frame and looked through the glass. Now we know that glass is transparent because, well, because science, but how does that work in the case of computer images? Well. Let's find out. Now, in the context of computer graphics, there are two types of transparency. The first is full transparency, which basically describes something that is completely invisible, and it's usually applied only to parts of an image. Of course, it can be applied to the entire image, but then there would be nothing to see. And the second is partial transparency, which describes graphics that are, surprise, surprise, only partially transparent. So they're visible to an extent, but so are the images in the background. This kind of transparency is also commonly referred to as translucency, and computers usually simulate it by mixing colors. In most computer graphics editors, transparency is represented with a distinct pattern, most commonly a checkerboard, and it's supported in a number of raster or bitmap file formats, including PNG, GIF, or GIF, however you want to call it, JPEG 2000, BMP, and TIFF. It's made possible thanks to a few different techniques. One of them involves the concept of transparent colors, and this particular technique is pretty straightforward. Within a single image's color palette, one color is given a transparent value. So when a decoder encounters a pixel with that value, it renders it in the color that is in the background in that specific point. In case this sounds familiar, but you can't exactly put your finger on it, maybe these two words will refresh your memory. Green screens. The technique in which green screens are used to remove the background from a subject in a video or photo is called chroma key compositing, and it basically works on the same principle. It takes one previously specified color, usually green or blue, and makes every point within an image or frame that is covered by it transparent. The reason why green and blue are most commonly used in this technique is because they drastically differ from most human skin tones, but practically any color can be specified as the one that will be transparent. However, if a transparent value is given to a color that appears in parts of the image or frame that are intended to be opaque, those parts will start vanishing, so a transparent color should always be chosen carefully. Another way of achieving transparency in computer graphics is by alpha compositing or utilizing something called an alpha channel. This is a concept that was introduced in the late 1970s by computer graphics pioneer Alvy Ray Smith, who, among other things, is also known for co-founding the animation studio Pixar. The concept of alpha channels was fully developed in 1984 by Thomas Porter and Tom Duff, and it works something like this. RGB images that are displayed on screens are made up of three components, better known as channels, which separately contain information for three different colors, red, green, and blue. Now some image formats like PNG can have a fourth channel called an alpha channel, which contains some additional information that basically defines the level of transparency of a pixel. At its simplest, this information is represented in the form of a value ranging from 0.0, .0 to 1.0. A pure value of 0 means that a pixel does not have any coverage information and is therefore transparent, while the value of 1 means that a pixel does have coverage and is therefore opaque. If the pixel is fully transparent, it will be filled with the color from the background, and if it's opaque, it will simply display the foreground color. However, the value can also be somewhere in between, resulting in a translucent effect where you should be able to see both the foreground and background color. Now, since an image can only be one color in a given point, in this case a blended color is computed as a weighted average of the foreground and background color. Transparent areas on an image can be specified with a technique called image masking, which also adds a sort of an off-image layer of binary information. Masking is commonly done using black to specify parts of the image that should be transparent, and white for parts that should be opaque. In a different technique, transparency can also be specified by using a clipping path, which is merely an outline. Everything within the outline is kept opaque, while everything outside of it will be specified as transparent. 
In one way or another, all these techniques are basically doing is specifying whether the computer should render certain points on an image in the foreground or background color, or in a mixture of the two. In optics, transparency is the physical property of a material that allows the transmission of light. And as we were able to see, the transmission of light doesn't really have much to do with transparency in computer graphics. So in that context, we could say that transparency isn't really true transparency. As it usually goes with computers, it's just a whole bunch of programming trickery that does a really good job of simulating it. The thing with programming trickery though is that not all of it is fun and useful. A lot of it can be bad and used against you, especially on the internet. Now a seamless way of guarding yourself against a lot of the bad is by using a virtual private network and my new go-to option for this sort of protection is NordVPN. Every so often you'll hear stories about people having their data stolen on the internet. And I know you might think, yeah, well that's not gonna happen to me. But at the same time, we're constantly connected to the internet where we use our passwords, credit card information, identity information, and whatnot. And when you think about it, all those things are basically up for grabs if we're not doing much to protect them. Now, NordVPN secures your browsing activities with military-grade encryption and protection that can be enabled in a user interface that I really think couldn't be much easier to use. It uses over a thousand super-fast servers across 61 countries. You get double data encryption for increased anonymity, onion over VPN servers, secure peer-to-peer -peer sharing, an automatic kill switch, and even a new cybersecurity suit that blocks malicious content that you might stumble upon during your browsing. So, if you're ready to get really serious about your internet safety, right now NordVPN is offering my viewers 77% off a three-year plan. Just go to nordvpn.com slash chmtech or click the link in the description to sign up and start protecting yourself today. That's nordvpn.com slash chmtech. Stay safe and stay strong.